Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. While you turn and let us pray. Father, I ask that you take this, uh, your servant, one more time. God, I realize I can't preach except the preacher come. No, oh, Father, I pray, God, that you'd anoint us one more time, that you'd use us for your honor and glory. Hide us behind Calvary, Lord. We realize, God, that we can't preach. We're the least of the least of the least. But, God, I ask this morning that you would anoint us. In our weakness, Father, may your strength be made perfect. God, in our ignorance, Lord, may your wisdom shine. Lord, may, uh, 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 as we preach today, Father, may they uh, may the world take notice that we've been with you. And we'll thank you for that and we'll praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. All right. Hosea chapter 4. Would you stand with us in reverence to the reading of the infallible word of God? Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are, are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. You may be seated. A simple thought this morning, a nation headed for judgment. A nation headed for judgment. Now, I, I want you to notice some things here uh, for you to understand uh, uh, where Hezekiah or, or where Hosea was coming from. I want you to, uh, you've got to go back and you've got to understand. The Bible said that God chose old, uh, Hosea uh, when he was just young. And he told him, said, I want you to marry a harlot. I want you to go into the harlots, and I want you to take a bride. You say, well, preacher, why did, he, why did he do that? If you'll read the book, you'll find out. He said, I want you to understand, Hosea, what I have went through with Israel. I want you to understand how I feel, because Israel has played the harlot on me. I chose them, I married myself to them, and they played the harlot. So I for you to understand, I want you uh, how to go and take a wife uh, that's a harlot uh, and you'll understand uh, uh, where I am. You know, if there's ever been a time we need to understand God's position, uh, it's a day we're living in today. Uh, we need to know, uh, uh, we need to understand that God uh, uh, expects some things out of us. Uh, and unless uh, uh, we perform those things, uh, uh, brother, we've got judgment but coming. Now I want you to notice uh, and if you uh, bear with me, it's hot up here. I'm going to get rid of this jacket. I want you to notice uh, some things that he said. He said, number one, there is no truth, mercy, or knowledge of God in the land. Susan was talking about this morning. Uh, in Sunday school, how that they had killed those 14 uh, kids and uh, or children or uh, young people, uh, Christians, how they burn them because they were Christians. We're living in a terrible time. What she didn't say is the whole time they were burning them, they were pleading for our country just to bomb them so they wouldn't have to go through the mercy, uh, the misery that they're going through just to give them mercy. Pleading for America uh, to intercede. There was a time when America stood strong. 
America uh, was considered a Christian nation, a nation under God, a nation that stood for something. But today our nation uh, uh, as a whole don't stand for nothing. We turned around and listen, I, I, it's easy to blame Obama and it's easy to blame those that are in office, but we need to put the blame right where it comes today. How the root of the matter is found in me. How, brother, we as Christians have sat back and kept our mouths shut. How we've let everything in the world go on until our nation has become a nation that's just all tore up and all made. Up. Our churches have allowed, listen, our churches have sat back and we've let anything and everything go on in the churches. Now listen, hey, you, you may not like this, but you're going to hear it anyway. It's time that we went back to the old time way of worshiping God. It's time that our churches had some standards about them. We've sat back. And we've listened to, uh, to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, good feeling preaching uh, until it just about destroyed our churches. Uh, what we need is some folks uh, that will stand up uh, for what's right. Uh, some folks that love God uh, and that act like they love God. Yeah. We've changed our way of worship. There was a time when you'd have a revival and you couldn't get them in the house of God. Right. You know why? Because folks wanted revival. Right. They wanted to hear a man of God that stand up and preach the truth. They wanted a gospel that would blister. Now they want a gospel that will comfort. Don't preach anything to us, preacher, that's going to hurt us. Don't talk, don't preach a, a message that's going to show us where we're living. I, I just preach us something real smooth. I, I let us get out of here by 12 o'clock so we can go I, I meet the kids at Cracker Barrel, I, have dinner and come back I, and go through another ritual, I, through just another meeting. I, hey, folks, we need to go to meeting. I, we need to come in the house of God. I, ready to meet. Amen. Don't tell me I need to dress up to go to church. Come on. I believe we ought to give God the very best we got. If all we got to pair overalls and a white shirt, that's all right. But we need to we need to give God the very best we got in our dress, in our walk, in our talk. We ought to act like Christians. They get up here with them voodoo hair deals and Lord have mercy, I ain't never seen such a mess in my life. People call themselves men of God, stand up here with their spot hairdos and a pair of blue jeans and a t-shirt. Some of me wearing short pants in the house of God. Let me tell you something. These women wearing dresses I say hi that shows everything they got and so low it shows there. Let me tell you something. God bless your heart. We ought to dress like Christians. We ought to act like Christians. We ought to talk like Christians. And God won't accept nothing less than that. Amen. Our nation's headed to judgment yeah. unless some changes take place. Oh, preacher, don't pre hey, hey, preacher, uh, don't preach that. <laughs> preacher, we wanna we want we want you to preach that feel good stuff. Let me tell you something. The Bible said that the word of God is quick. It's powerful. Yeah. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Yeah. Right. That it cut us under the to the cut to the bone, cut us under to the divide of the soul and the spirit. Right. The word of God will cut you, brother. It will put you. It will show you where you are living and where you need to be living. And if we're preaching that, our brother, our churches, what they'll get on fire. If we're not. They're just going to lull themselves to sleep on the benches and our kids and our grandkids are going to die and go to hell. I'm here to tell you if anything reaches them, it won't be a party in the parking lot. It won't be a, a, a glass of Kool-Aid. It won't be a band up here on stage beating uh, drums and uh, having some kind of music uh, uh, show. It'll be the preached word of God and 
if that don't reach them, they won't be reached. Amen. 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 Mamas and daddies, listen to what I'm telling you. A nation headed to judgment. I want to show you some things that he said. He said there's no more truth. We're preaching a watered down gospel. I heard a message in the count meeting. And I thank God for that man of God that preached that message. And, and I'd like to have that outline. Hope God let me preach on it sometime. And he preached about when they come and they stole the gold out of the house of Israel. And now the king just uh, slipped in brass uh, over. Uh, he, he had uh, all of his, uh, had his folks to go out there and pour uh, brass vessels to look like the gold vessels. In the, in the kingdom and they had somebody set up to shine them things and keep them shined and what he was talking about is uh, 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 we don't need we don't want the gold anymore we've settled for the brass and, and that's about the truth our churches have settled for something other than what we ought to have and he said uh, they, they, after a while they didn't even worry about polishing it. They just let it tarnish. They didn't even notice the tarnish on it anymore. And that's the truth. Our churches have sat down. Uh, we went through this form of going to church. Our preachers have quit preaching like they used to preach. We've settled for something less than what we ought to have. And I'm telling you what's the truth. The tarnish don't even bother us anymore. Mm -hmm. Then he went into Revelation where the Lord said, I, I, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. Uh, brother, he he said we need the gold back in the church that's what we need we need the we need God back in the church we don't need this form of junk that we've had we need the word of God in our church we need the strength of the preaching of the word of God in our church we need the strength of our folks living like Christians we need to go back to the old time way of doing things amen Wonder why we in the mess we in in America. He said they ain't even no knowledge of God in the land anymore. Okay? Hang on. You know why they ain't no knowledge of God anymore? We ain't teaching the children no more. Because mom and daddy ain't bringing them to Sunday school. Amen. They want to come at 11 o'clock, uh, listen for uh, to one message if they squirm long enough to sit there and listen to a message and then scoot out of there at 12 o'clock and not come back for another month. That's what they want. We got once a month Christians and young people in this church. You see them once a month. They come on the first Sunday of the month and you don't see them no more. God bless your heart. There's something wrong with that. Uh, and listen, hey, we say, oh, it's there for Oh, no, it ain't their fault. It's our fault. And we've sat here and we've let it go on until they've got the car. They've come to, that's the norm and that's the habit and that's the way they do it. It ain't their fault. It is our fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's mom and daddy's fault. Anything that they find to keep them out of church, right. that's what they do. Yeah. I wish we'd go back to a blue law in the state of Alabama. Amen. Amen. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about where the stores had to close up. Amen. Brother, when I was growing up, you didn't, <laughs> hey, if you didn't get a loaf of bread on Saturday, you didn't have a loaf of bread because the stores had all closed on Sunday. That's back in the day when we respected God. That's back in the day when folks loved God. That's in the day when folks wanted God in their home. That's right. Amen. This ain't popular preaching, is it? No. Yes, it is. Well, it is. He said, he said there ain't no knowledge of God anymore. Right. Sunday school is where we used to teach our children about God. Right. I remember growing up in Fairview Baptist Church. That little old Sunday school class. You know the church back then, uh, we didn't have <laughs> we didn't have all these Sunday school rooms. Yeah had old petitions, the curtains, and they'd pull the curtains. Yeah. And at one Sunday school room for the kids back in the back. And 
the, uh, the adults class. It wasn't the ladies' adults and the, and the men's adults. They had one adult class, and one of the deacons talked that adult class. The men and women sat there, and they went to Sunday school together. And them old saints of God that taught us when we were little bitty, taught us about the love of God, Amen. the grace of God. Amen. I remember Miss Sweat teaching our class. And, oh, she uh, started out in a card class. Y'all remember what a card class was? I didn't have, we didn't have all this literature. Had a, had a card that the, uh, that the Sunday school lesson was on. And, and, and she'd take that card and, and we'd study it that week and then she'd teach off that card. Then uh, later on, we began to get literature, you know, and, and boy, we really thought we was something when we got, uh, got literature. But you know what the ladies and men used? They didn't use literature. They didn't have to pay attention to what some commentator told them. God bless your heart, they took the Word of God. And they taught the Word of God in Sunday school. Sometimes I think we need to throw the literature out the window and go back to the Word of God and we'd all be better off. Oh, you don't agree with that, do you? I don't care whether you agree with it or not. It's still the truth. Amen. <laughs> we get what the Baptist denomination wants us to get. <clears throat> yeah. I'll tell you. Hey, yeah. hang with me. Yeah. And sometimes I don't agree with what they have to say. <clears throat> but that's me. All right. Said so ain't no knowledge of God in the land. Said you're full of murder. My goodness gracious. How long has it been since you could turn the news on at night without somebody being murdered? Right. Just this week, we had a kid in Ragland, or a young man murdered in Ragland. I didn't know about Susan was telling me about it on the way to church. I didn't know. We'd had a murder, but we had one up there in Rackham, apparently. Hmm. Hey, it used to be just in the inner city where you had the murders. But it ain't just the inner city now. It's everywhere you look. Yeah. You know why? They call it demonic possession. <laughs> That's These folks... Now I want you to listen. Now what I'm fixing to tell you is going to startle some of y'all. Our kids today, you know what the fastest springing religion, I ain't talking about salvation, religion is right now among teenagers? Satanism. Satanism. <laughs> And you wonder why we're having murders, why our kids are strung out on drugs, why all these things are going on. I'm telling you, when you try to hold hands with Satan, you headed for destruction, brother. You can't hold hands with Satan. You better listen. Folks think, oh, uh, Satan, uh, we defeated Satan. Hey, we did. Us that are saved. But I'm telling you, our kids go to playing around with Satan. And don't you think he won't deceive them? He, hey, the Bible said he'd deceive the very elect if it were possible. He is doing everything that he can to deceive our kids. And it's working. They're killing one another. Kids killing kids over an ounce of dope. They're killing kids over girlfriends and boyfriends. Over a pair of tennis shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I read not too long ago an article in the paper where a, 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 a kid killed another kid and when they found out what it was about, it was a, over jealousy about a pair of tennis shoes. Where have we come to? We're a nation, folks, that's headed for judgment. Yeah, that's right. I 
got to hurry him. He said, they're murderers and they're thieves. Just this week, y'all had armed robbery right here in Irondale. Went in a convenience store down here and robbed it right down here. Our ladies can't even walk from uh, the parking lot into Walmart with having to worry about some thug coming along and jerking their purses out of their hand and running off with them. That's all right. You can't even use your credit card anymore, even at some of these uh, fast food places, because they steal your identity and go in and steal everything out of your bank account. We're a nation full of thieves. Why? Because folks are too sorry to work anymore. Amen. Oh, let me just sit back and draw my welfare check. <coughs> I wish they'd do completely away with welfare. <coughs> then they'd have to get up and go to work. You say, preacher, I just ain't able to work. Hey, let me tell you something. I worked for years when I wasn't able to work. That old gal right there has worked almost 35 years now. I see her get up some morning when she just barely can't put her clothes on and go to work. And then you tell me you're, some of these sorry folks lay around and won't get up and go to work. Well, I can't find a job. That's a lie. Amen. If you want a job, you can find one. That's right. You know what it is? They want a job where they ain't got to do no work. Hey, plenty of pick and shovel jobs out there. <laughs> but oh, I can't do that. Oh, if you get hungry, you can. Amen. Our churches today have become a station for folks to call to get support. <laughs> Y'all don't like this, do you? Yeah, come on. It used to be that the church helped those that were really in need in their congregation. But it's got to work. The church has turned into just, hey, we get calls every week in here. Uh, can you put us up in a motel? Can you feed us? Can you buy us groceries? Can you pay our light bill? You know what I want to tell them sometimes? Go to work! Amen. Don't nobody pay my light bill. That's right. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> Jimmy, anybody pay yours? <laughs> no, they don't. Now listen, don't you go off and say the preacher's against this. Uh, listen, I, I, I think disability is fantastic for those that really need it. Right. But it's got to work. Man, I was sitting at Walmart the other day, and this little old gal come in, she couldn't have been over 30 years old. Pulling in that disability parking lot, uh, parking thing. Got out, run to the store, run back in, got back in the car. And I thought, my Lord of mercy, there's another probably on dope getting disability because she's a dope man. Mm -hmm. Yet, all of us old heads sitting here worked all of our life. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Still working. Work. Yeah. Old Bob works day and night. <laughs> he works his job and then comes home and works again. He's going to do a job for me here in a few days. But, you know, I don't want to come off as being somebody that's so hard and so callous. I'm not hard and I'm not callous. I believe <coughs> folks that need help ought to get it. Amen. But I believe if you're able to work, you ought to get up and go to work like right. everybody else. Amen. 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 Poor old Greg. He gets up one leg, that thing bleeding half the time, hobbles off to work. I appreciate Greg. Amen. He could sit at the house and say, feed me. 
but he gets up and goes to work. I got to go. All right, let me go on down here. I, I got to get off of that. So they're thieves and they're liars. You know what the Bible said? And all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. They more liars in this world today than I ever seen in my life. I got more, I, it's hard for me to invite somebody to church anymore because I'm just making them lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's They'll tell you, oh, I'm, I'm coming, preacher. Yeah. I'm coming, preacher. I've seen one girl I've been inviting church for a long time, I think. She pulled up and said, I'm coming to church. I said, hello, line, and called her by her name. <laughs> I said, don't even tell me that. You've lied to me so many times, I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want to make you lie, so I ain't even going to ask you. <laughs> Folks will, t hey, what well, well, Daddy used to say, they climb a tree to tell you a lie before they stand on the ground and tell you the truth. <laughs> They'll work hard just to be able to lie to you. And we expect God to bless us. And I'm telling you something. May folk call themselves Christians and lie to you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Ask them, why wasn't you here, son? Oh, I was sick. Doing all the time. That's a lie. You wasn't sick. You just didn't want to come. Why didn't you say I just didn't want to come? Yeah. You're right. Hmm. <laughs> Just tell it like it is. You know, Daddy used to tell me, if you tell the truth, you ain't got to go back and worry about what you said. You can tell it the same way again. When, when, you, see, when you see folks having to think about what they told you, you about rest assured they done lied to you. But we're living in a nation today that's full of liars. Our folks up there in Washington, everything they tell you is a lie. Hey, the man. news media, you can't even believe them anymore. Right. You turn the news on and they'll get up and tell you something knowing it's a lie. Right. We're headed to judgment. America is a nation that's headed to judgment. I got to hurry. I got about 10 minutes here left, I think. Now, our sins have separated us personally, as a family, as a neighborhood, as a nation. And the Lord has a controversy with this. You see, there's not but one thing that can separate us from God. When Paul went to tell him about all those things that couldn't separate us from God, he left out one thing that can separate us from God. But he went on later on and he took that up and he said our sins and our iniquities have separated us from God. That's right. The only thing that will separate a child of God from God is sin in his life. God cannot work with you when you have sin in your life. He cannot use you. I don't care if you can be the best singer. You can have a voice of an angel. You can get up and you can sing so sweet that it sounds like the birds are singing. But if your life is laden down with sin, that song you're singing ain't worth a dime. Amen. You can teach a Sunday school class and you can teach it eloquently and you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you, listen, if your life ain't what it's supposed to be and you've got sin in your life, that lesson you just a well to beat on that desk right there because you get just as much out of it. A preacher can walk behind the stand and he can preach till his heart uh, busts out. And if he's got sin in his life, God will not honor that message that he's a preaching. Right, right. 
That's the reason I tell you I strive every day. The first thing I do when I, my feet hit the floor in the morning, I say, God, help me today not to bring a reproach on you. Help me today to live my life like it's supposed to be. Don't let me this day let you down. God, don't let me let my message that you give me to preach be of not effect because of sin in my life. Now, I'm telling you, folks, we need to get where God can use us. We need to get the sin out of our life. Amen. We have no humility about us anymore. <laughs> Jeremiah said, were they ashamed when they had committed these abominations? Nay, they were not at all ashamed and neither could they blush. You know what it used to be? Now, now listen to what I'm telling you. It used to be when a lady would stand up and somebody would tell one of them old smutty jokes in her presence that them cheeks would turn red. She'd begin to blush and she'd walk away from that. Now these ladies have got filth their mouths and the men have. They sit up and they tell these filthy, nasty jokes and laugh about it. They get on television, watch these filthy, nasty shows. I'm telling you, they ain't nothing makes us blush anymore. We need a blush about us. We need some humility in our lives. Amen. We need to walk humbly before God. Oh, that we'd be humble. That we'd be what God could use. Oh, that our church would have some humility about it. Listen, you can come up here in this altar and you can say all the prayers you want to. But you know the ones that God hears and answers is when we get in that altar humbly before God and we say, Lord, I ain't worthy to call on you. Oh, but God, would you hear me today? Brother, when you get humble in the sight of God, look out, he's fixing to rock your world for you. I'm telling you, he'll bless you if you'll just get humble, if you'll just get submissive to his will, if you'll just get where God can use you. Oh, I'm telling you, you ain't never seen Hey, what was it? The great evangelist Claudio Moody said that the world is yet to see what one man totally committed to God can do. Let me be that man. Amen. God used Claudio Moody. But then on his deathbed, you know what he said? The world is yet to see what one man totally devoted to God could be. See, Dwight L. Moody knew that even though he had done his best to totally devote to God, he knew that he had failed in areas in his life. Every one of us are going to fail. We're going to have shortcomings in our life. But oh, that we'd just get humble before God. And we'd say, God, when I fail you, Lord, don't let me lay there and roll, roll around in it. Help me to get up, dust myself off, come back to you, repent of my sin, and go in a different direction. Oh, God, help me to be humble in your sight. And then we've got to realize that our salvation comes only through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's nothing that we can do to grant us mercy and salvation. It only comes through mercy and grace. That unmerited, undeserved favor of God oh that we would just accept the grace and the mercies of God in our day oh that salvation would be we would look at salvation and understand that only through the blood of Jesus Christ 
can we be saved? Listen, folk, there is no other way. I can stand here and I can preach all day to you. But the fact of the matter is that only through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can you be saved. I believe we ought to strive every day to be everything we can be to God. But grace, uh, but salvation comes by grace. And we've got to understand that if our children are saved, if our acquaintances are saved, if our nation is healed, if our nation is saved, it'll be through the grace and mercies of God. And we need to pray every day for grace and mercy that God would grant our children, would grant our, our community, would grant our nation mercy that we don't deserve because if we got what we deserve we'd all be in hell today right. but thanks be to God I like what Paul said thanks be to God who giveth us the victory Amen. through his darling son I hope this message has been a blessing to you Father thank you for just allowing us to come and preach the message you laid on our heart one more time today. Father, we're so undeserving. Our nation's in so much trouble. We need you so bad today, Lord. Father, we need you worse than we ever have in America today. Our children need you, Lord. God, our neighbors need you. Our, uh, our, our leaders and our uh, in the state and in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, White House and even in our little old city governments and county governments. Oh, God, they need your leadership today. Father, would you help them to seek you? You said seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things will be added unto you. Help us, God, to seek you today. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you. And we'll give you the glory, for it's in Jesus' blessed name we ask. Amen.